spiritual book. Like a book where we can use this book for divine inspiration <coughs> the way it is. You can't pick up the Bible and just read the Bible and think that that's how it is. Or read the Quran and think that that's how it is. Because they'll tell you that the book's based on parables. And the book's based on metaphors. And all that is a hidden way of saying metaphysics and high science and universal laws and things that they would never ever, the preacher would never ever tell you that the Bible is a metaphysical book. Because once you get on metaphysics, you would know that you're God. And there's not no God in the sky that's putting his hand through some clouds or whatever to lift you up when you're down and all this stuff. You're God. You, the sister creates. The sister creates through the great goddess Allah who sent the prophet called Muhammad. Empress Menen is connected to him. Because Empress Menen is from the line of Prophet Muhammad. With Empress Menen being from the line of Prophet Muhammad, that means the correlation that happened between his imperial majesty and Empress Menen was more than what we think it is. We're looking at it as some correlation. Like these two people coming together and because of, of them coming together, you know, um, they're royally united now. We've been misled with regard to all this information because we really choose not to study. We really choose not to deal with the facts, right? Now, there's lots of races that I talk to personally that really put flames on Egypt and pharaohs and really this pharaohs. But if the individual who you say is your god or whatever is wearing an ankh and an ankh comes from Egypt, then who are you really punking off? Other than yourself. Because he's letting you know that you know, I'm repping Kemet because I'm a Kushite. And Kemet, Kemetans, people from Kemet and people from Kush are family. There's not a separation. Separation came in when the European, the foreigner, came into Africa and there was a great land grab for Africa between all the European nations. Because nations are what make up the planet. So if you belong to a nation, you can do certain things. If you don't belong to a nation, you, you just don't have any rights. So as a Kushite, the young Dejazmek found himself sent to further his education and enrolled in the new Medalic school, which was founded in the city of Puddinchadra by an Egyptian, Hannah Bey Salem. So we know as Dejazmek, Rastafari was learned in the way of Moorish sciences and Egyptian mysteries. So the principal of his school, his name was Hannah Bey. And Bey is a Moorish name. It's a Moorish title of nobility. Our title of nobility is El. Where you get like El Capitan and Israel. It's a title of nobility. And those titles of nobility are connected to the five points on our ancestors' flag, which is the Moroccan flag. And one of them is El. One of them is Day, D E Y. One of them is Bay, D E Y. One of them is A L Al. And one of them is A L I, Ali. 
So Haji Selassie, I knew about moral science, and he knew about the Egyptian mystery school. He also knew about the Kabbalah. In this scheme, the seven heavens are placed on the central column as against the seven lower seraphim Syriac in some Kabbalistic formulations. This is because here the heavens are seen as states of consciousness up the middle way of holy knowledge. As spiritual stages, the traditional accounts set out in symbolism the conditions of each level from the first moment of self-awareness at Malka to the final aesthetic in the seventh heaven of Arabah. So, the coronation that took place between His Imperial Majesty and Empress Menem, there was seven items that were given. Now, like we're saying, we have to take what the Rasses say. Because I'm not just up here just telling you some stuff. Because I just want to tell you some stuff. Like somebody's missing some kind of message and it's not right that y'all don't even know what's going on. Now, in the promise key by Right Honorable Leonard Percival Howell, G.G. Mara, G.G. Mara, that was basically his other name. We'll get to that a little bit after. But the promise key, in the preface, it is axiomatic that development in any country must proceed simultaneously in all areas of its life. As a country advances economically, equivalent progress can be made in the creation of more highly developed social and political institutions as well. Any attempt to retard advancement in any single area will inevitably retard the development of the whole and will create serious distortions in the oral fabric of the nation. This principle we have always recognized and in our actions we have been, we have been guided by it. The emphasis by which we have given to education in our country has stemmed from our determination to eliminate ignorance and to prepare our people for the changes which Ethiopia's emergence in the modern world would bring upon them. It is axiomatic that change begets change and that each step forward leads logically and exorably to the next and the next. Once unleashed, the forces of history cannot be curtailed or restrained. And he is naive indeed who says, this far I will go and no further. This principle too, we have recognized and followed. So, the Imperial Majesty is talking about the fact that we have to evolve. We cannot be stagnant. Because once we become stagnant, there's no progression. There's only regression. The coronation that happened between his Imperial Majesty and Empress Menes 